Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In the previous lectures, we have seen an introduction to the concept of linear block codes. We have then also looked closely at repetition codes and their utility. In this lecture, we are going to use GNU radio in order to build a repetition code encoder and decoder. What we will see is that encoding for the for repetition codes is very easy because we will use the repeat block in GNU radio merely to repeat the bits that many times. For decoding, we will perform majority logic decoding that is we will count the number of ones. If the number of ones is more than uh, the, uh, more than n minus 1 upon 2 or so, we will conclude that it is a 1. If it is less, then we will conclude it is a 0. For this, we will implement our own Python block where we count the number of ones and let us say for a 3 repetition code, there are 2 or more ones, we will conclude it is a 1 and for a 0 or 1 ones, we will conclude it is a 0. We will also use a histogram with noise to show that the repetition code is very robust even in the presence of errors. We will begin by first having an equivalent of the binary symmetric channel by using BPSK with additive white Gaussian noise as our channel. So let us begin. We will first have a random source. So control F or command F, we will say random. We will place our random source over here. As usual, we will convert it to byte data type, but we will keep the number maximum as 2. We will add our constellation related blocks. So, I will do control F or command F. We will say constellation. We will grab our constellation object and the constellation encoder. The constellation object we will set to BPSK and give it the name MyBPSK and the constellation encoder we will connect and then we will call it my bpsk so that it uses the object we are now set we will add a throttle control f command f we will say throttle after the throttle is connected we are now ready to add noise so we will add a noise source but before that let's actually make this real because for bpsk we can do with a real channel so control f command f i'll say complex to real and we'll have the complex to real and then add a noise source so control f or command f will say noise we will keep a noise source over here make the noise source as a float and make the amplitude as noise std so that we can control the amplitude and control f or command f will say add and then this add block we will convert to float and then of course the noise std needs to be uh, arranged for for that we will use a range so control f or command f will say range and we will double click the range make the name noise std the default value is 0 we will stop at around let's say 10 step 0.1 and we are set. Now we can we can then just do a couple of things. We can decode the constellation. So control F or command F will first say float to complex. Okay, so that we say float to complex over here. Okay. Now the float to complex, the imaginary part needs to be uh, 0. So we will add a constant source, control F or command F, we will say constant. We will grab a constant source. We will make the constant source a float type of, and value 0, connect it. Yeah, we can now grab the constellation decoder. So control F or command F, we will say constellation decoder. And once you have the constellation decoder, you now have access to the bytes or that is the bits as well. We will double click this and make this my BPSK. Now we can compare the original data with the decoded data. So for that we will use two approaches. 
The first is we'll have a time sync. So control over command F will say time sync. We will rotate the time sync using the left key. Double click. We will make the type float and make it have two inputs. And unfortunately, these are bytes, so you need to convert them. So we'll have a character to float. So con or maybe we'll just rotate it right and keep it this way. We'll have a character to float. So control F for command F will say C H A R actually. So there is a character to float. We will gap that. Connect the original data source here. Connect it to the first input. We'll come copy another one. Control C, Control V and rotate this, connect this to the second input and now we can visualize. And we have something like this, the red and the blue are overlapping because there are no errors. Now noise STD controls the error. If you now increase the noise STD, you will start seeing errors occurring. And these errors are the points where the blue and the red do not match and it is very evident. Let's stop and you can see over here the red you know, wherever the red and blue overlap, it is good. But for example, at these spots, the blue is here, the red is here. There is a, an error. Similarly, over here, the blue is here, the red is here, there is an error. Over here, there is no error, but there are errors. Now, if you let this run, you will see that if you increase the noise variance, you'll start getting more and more errors and you will get a completely random effect. You can also verify this using a histogram sync. So let's just rotate this to the left and maybe I can just add a histogram sync over here. So I'll say control F for command F. I'll say histogram sync. Now for the histogram sync, I'm going to actually subtract these two. And if I subtract these two, I will either get one minus zero, which is one, one minus one, which is zero, zero minus zero, which is zero, or zero minus one, which is minus one. So I can subtract these two and take an absolute value. If I get a zero, that indicates no error. If I get a one, I get an error. So I'll just control F for command F. I'll say subtract and I'll make this a float. I'll subtract the original stream from the decoded stream and I'll also add an absolute block. Control F for command F. Let's say ABS and we'll make this a float. And now we will come pass this subtracted output to the float. And now we have a histogram sync. So if you execute this flow graph, this blue indicates that, let's just see, uh, remove the auto scale Y, blue indicates that there are a thousand out of, th out of thousand decoded correctly. If you increase the noise STD, you will start getting a one over here indicating errors. So over here you have about 400, like 400 errors and about 600 are being decoded correctly. If you reduce the P, that is the bit error probability, then you get 300 incorrect, about 600, 700 correct. So you have a knob within which you can control the errors. You can see that a lower probability of error, you record correctly. A higher probability of error, you make mistakes. And if you have an extreme probability of error, then it's 50-50. You have bit error rate of half, which means it's as good as a coin toss. So in this manner, we have essentially constructed a standard binary symmetric-like channel. Our next task is to add a code in order to see that the performance actually improves. Let us do that. To do this, we are going to use a repetition code. And the easiest way to realize the repetition code is to just repeat the transmitted bits. And at the receiver, as you discussed in class, you can decode them and use majority logic to capture them. So I'll do control F for command F. I'm going to say, repeat and I will get the repeat block. The repeat block I will double click. I am going to say interpolation is 3 and the type is byte. So now I can connect the random source over here and now the interpolation is 3. Of course I could have taken the encoded output and repeated as well but let me just add a, a constellation encoder again. So I will do control C, control V. I have a constellation encoder. I don't need a throttle because only one throttle is enough for one flow graph. I'll grab a complex to real, control C, control V, connect this over here. Now since this operates at a rate slightly different because I am interpolating by 3, I will grab a fresh noise source, so control C, control V, 
This also uses the same noise STD, so I am set. I'll add Control C, Control V, the add block, and connect these over here. Next, I will get the float to complex because I need to convert it back. So I'll actually kind of copy all these three objects by like this and do Control C and Control V and move these over here. Now I can connect this to may convert it to real and then this is the constellation decoder. The decoder output can now be viewed in the QT GUI time sync or the <coughs> QT histogram sync. But first I need to <coughs> decode and get back the majority logic. So I'm going from three to one. To do that, I'm going to split this output into three. So I'm going to use control F for command F and say stream dmux. So the stream dmux can be used to split every three outputs and give them to me in parallel. So I will d connect this over here. Of course, I need to change the type. I double click, change this to byte, change this to 111 or if you want to write it compactly, star 1. 1 star 3 with 3 and now I need to perform majority decoding logic on this. In order to perform majority decoding on this, there are multiple ways. The key idea is for you to say if there are 0 or 1 ones, then conclude that a 0 was sent. If you have 2 or 3 ones, conclude that a 1 was sent. This is something that we have seen explicitly in the class. So, but implementing the majority logic you can do it in multitude of ways. We are going to use a Python block. So control F or command F, we will say Python and grab the Python block. We will double click this Python block, open an editor, choose any editor that is convenient for you. And now let us edit this to perform the majority decoding logic. Remember, we need three character or byte inputs and one byte output. So we are going to just get rid of these comments first. Now over here, we don't need this comment. We don't need this parameter. Now, let us first call this majority decoder. I'll call this np.int8. I need three inputs, so I'll just say np.int8 three times. And the output is a single np.int8. These np.int8s are either 0 or 1. They are not, they don't contain 8 bits. It's an 8 bit vector containing only 0 or 1 in the least significant bit. That is the key thing that you have to understand. So all we need to do is to find the number of ones and zeros uh, in each of, you know, in th these three parallel inputs and then conclude what was sent based on that. Now the work function, in the work function, we have to change this. Let us do it carefully. The way we are going to implement our majority decision logic is to add up the inputs. So if you add up the inputs, each entry is going to be either 0 or 1. So if you add up the three inputs, you're going to get either 0, 1, 2 or 3. So if you add up the input, let's say temp is input item 0. Plus input items 1. Plus input items 2. Now in temp, you have an array consisting of the Array, it's like the addition of the arrays, input items 0, 1 and 2, each of these has zeros and 1s and the entries are now going to be 0, 1, 2 or 3. Now in temp, which we are going to map to the output, whenever you have 2 or 3, you want to set it to 1. Whenever you have 0 or 1, you want to set it to 0. Let's first handle the 0 or 1 case first. So temp, wherever temp is 0 or 1, we'll say temp less than or equal to 1 is 0. Wherever it is 2 or more, we'll set it to 1. Finally, all we are going to do is to map this output items as temp 
and this is done. Now why does this work? See input items is an array, it, it, like input item 0, input items 1, input items 2 are all arrays of the same length. Each corresponding entry has the three repeated code which has gone through your binary symmetric channel. Now our task is to conclude what was sent based on the most likely event. The most likely is that a single error has occurred or no errors have occurred. If a single error has occurred, then you will either get, if you send 000, you get 000, 001, 010 or 100. That means if there is a single one, you can just conclude 000 was sent. If there are two or more ones, 111 was sent. And then you map back the correct bit. So let's save this and exit. And now we have a nice majority decoder. We can connect these up. And this majority decoder output can then be compared. Let's first do the time comparison. So we'll add three inputs. Go down. Number of inputs is three. And now we can copy this character to float. Control C, Control V. Grab this over here. Connect this up. Connect this up. And now if you execute the flow graph, you see a green also that matches the blue, no errors. And if you increase the noise, then you will see that the green, let's say that we set it here, you will see that the green essentially will track the blue more often. So if you look at the green and blue versus red and blue, red will have more errors. Let's set the error to be a little lower and you'll basically see, let's say we set it here you will see that the green and blue have few errors. There are very few spots where there is a mismatch. But if you look at the red, there are many more spots where there is a mismatch. Of course, the true way to find this is to view the histogram. So let us modify the histogram. So I'm going to double click. Let's not auto scale. And let's add two inputs. Now the second input, you have to perform the same operation. You have to perform a subtraction and absolute with the original. Let us actually do that. So I'm just going to copy control C, control V. I have the subtraction over here. Connect this output to this over here and connect the original over here. And again, an absolute. So control C, control V. I'll grab an absolute. I'll grab move this absolute over here. Connect this and connect it to the output. Let's just move this to the right a little so that you can see what is happening. Now, if I execute this flow graph, you can see that there's a red and there's a blue which are overlapping. Uh, in fact, maybe let's actually do one thing. Let's swap these so that, you know, the second one essentially, or let's just leave, let's just, let's just swap these. Yeah. Now if you execute the flow graph, yeah, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'll just undo that. Yeah. If you now increase the noise, you will see that the blue one pops up when the red one pops up. The red one is with the repetition coding. As you can see, the number of errors is much higher in the case of the blue one, which is without coding, while the red one is pretty robust because of the fact that you are performing repetition coding. Let's increase the noise. As you increase the noise, you are able to see that the both the peaks fall, but again the red one is below because repetition coding allows you to correct the errors, at least one error among three, it is able to correct most of the time. Now, as always, if you increase the effect of repetition coding, you are going to get better performance. For example, if you set this interpolation to five, and if you set this to five, and if you change the majority decoder to account for five errors, let's do that. So we need to add two inputs here. We've added two inputs. Now let's add them here also. And now in this case, when you have 5, you have to change this slightly. 0, 1 or 2 will result in 0. 3, 4 or 5 will result in 1. 
let's now inspect our performance okay so let's i think i made a small error i'm sorry so if you now look over here in period in date in period in date yeah I, there was a small syntax error i apologize so we'll fix the syntax error there should be a comma here this will fix things now we can connect these over here and this particular code will result in even more of error correction okay let's see So he says list index out of range. Yes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, oh, three, four. I'm so sorry. Yes. Now, if you execute this flow graph, you will see that even with a slightly more number of errors you can see that the red one is much better in fact if you see if you can compare with the same let's say 1.5 the noise standard deviation you will see that the red one is actually much lower because you are able to now correct two errors remember the five repetition code can correct two errors even with a higher amount of noise you can see that the number of error correct the amount of error correction offered by the five repetition code is very very significant let us go one step further and let's make this 9. <clears throat> here also we'll make it 9 and here we'll have to make it 9. Uh, in order to avoid these kinds of errors, let us actually just make this star 9. That will give me 9 inputs and over here, you know, you can always just do plus 5. Six, seven. Now, in the case of nine, zero, one, two, three, four will be resulted. You know, if there are up to four ones, you can conclude zero. Five or more ones, you have to conclude one. Right. So now, let us evaluate the performance of this block. Connect these. Connect these. Connect these connect these and if you now execute your flow graph let's set it to the same 1.5 with 1.5 you can see that the errors with the coding is even lower in fact only about 5% of the bits are in error and rest are all correct even if you increase the noise the red one is very very robust and you are getting a much much more effective error correction because of the use of 9 length repetition of course, as you saw, repetition coding results in very good performance, but the price you pay is you have to essentially reduce the rate to one ninth and that is a major price that you have to pay and therefore repetition codes may or may not be very useful in the longer kind of uh, uh, in all kinds of systems where efficiency is needed, which is why we will move on to better codes like Hamming codes in the next lecture. One final remark, in particular I want you to just uh, note a trick when you use the histogram sync is that one issue with the current implementation is that this blue and red are overlapping and it's sometimes difficult to see you know how much height there is and everything like that of each uh, separately you have to hide one over the other. So since the values are 0 and 1 we can play a trick by offsetting one of these to a small extent that is let's say you can add a constant to one of these so let me do this so control f for command f i'll say add constant and i'll add a floating constant of let's say minus 0 0.2 if i add the constant minus 0 0.2 before sending it to the histogram you can see the histogram bins separately so if i hit run so you can see them separately so now if i add noise also you can compare the heights of these more conveniently on the same graph. So it's very, very convenient 
and you can sort of visualize things in a much easier way. The other remark that I wish to make is that if you have an extreme amount of noise, in this case if I make the noise standard deviation 10, that corresponds to noise variance of 100, so it's like the SNR is close to 1 upon 100, then you can see that the performance is essentially really poor for both of these. Of course, still the repetition code's height is better because it is able to correct some amount of errors. But this confirms our hypothesis that as the P goes to half, that is your EV by N0 goes to zero, as you discussed in class, the error performance becomes poor. Even if you have coding, if the error is, the noise is too much, you cannot recover the performance. This is something that you have to remember. In terms of the BPSK, the N0 is very high, so you can't really distinguish between the plus one and minus one very easily. In this lecture, we have built a repetition code based error correction system in GNU radio. As we saw, the error repetition based error correction code also encounters errors, but it is much, much more robust than the uncoded system. And we saw that even when you have a large amount of noise, the repetition code resulted in a significant amount of error correction and performed much better than the uncoded system as we saw by looking at the histograms comparing the correct and the erroneous bits decoded. One major issue with the repetition code however is the fact that it is very poor in terms of uh, rate because you are essentially repeating for 9 repetition code you are repeating it 9 times so when compared to the uncoded case your rate is 1 ninth. That's a huge amount of overhead or loss in performance. In the next lecture, we will look at the Hamming code, which is very effective at correcting a single bit error. And it still offers a much higher rate than just a plain repetition code. Thank you.